0% in taxes on $40 million. So. so your LLC can pay money to your management company up here, and your S corporation, mm -hmm. Instaboost, can pay money to your management company up here. This is the only place you should be paid out. Gotcha, yeah. Okay? My operational... Or to protect my other LLCs. Yep. So... Let's say you have three separate mm -hmm. LLCs. Mm -hmm. You have your operational LLC for Instaboost. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have your operational LLC for a clothing brand you yeah. started, and let's say you have an operational LLC for a branding company. Your operational entities are the ones that make money, okay? These ones need to be set up in the state in which you operate in. Gotcha. So if you're a California, you're here in California and your business is here in California, mm. this needs to be set up in California. Mm. If your LLC operates in Florida and you're running that business in Florida, it needs to be set up in Florida. And same with this. Mm. But these companies can each have a parent company that they all flow up to. And this one needs to be the COPE that I just explained to you, the charging order protection mm. entity. Anytime you pay money, when you move money over from one bank account, to this bank account, that's a tax deduction. You're reducing your taxes. It's a deduction. What? Anytime you move money from this operational company to this management company, Jeez. this is a tax deduction. Now you're probably thinking, Carlton, what the hell am I gonna use a management company for? No, I you're already can. managing, yeah. you're already managing your business. You're just choosing to do it inside of your operational companies. You're coming here and acting like a manager right now. Mm. Let me look over this, let Be me make sure payrolls. Let me make sure payroll's going well. Mm. Let me make sure my ads team is doing well. Mm. Let me check in with my marketers. Let me check in with my business development. You're doing managerial responsibilities inside of your operational company. You're not getting paid for that. You could have your management company mm. manage your operational LLC for um, Instaboost, for your clothing brand, and for your branding, and house this income up here and take management expenses that are completely different than your operational mm. expenses. Now you can go manage your company from Bora Bora and write yeah. off the trip because this corporation decided to hold its annual meetings mm. in Bora Bora instead of here in California. This, this management company can have its own yeah. car, mm -hmm. its own home office. Do you see now? I definitely, I definitely. It can have its own retirement. I could hire my sister inside of this management company and give her a 401k. <laughs> yeah, that's fire. That's fire. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's say I wanted to go into real estate. Ah. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, real estate is like one of the big plays. Everything. I'm managing my own investment property. It's an Airbnb. It doesn't really require a whole lot of work. I get paid for managing it and I get cash flow from running my operation. Mm -hmm. Right? Same situation. So we use management companies as a pretty big strategy to um, offset taxable income. It creates another tax mm -hmm, deduction, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then we use charging order states to keep your name offline and to keep you protected in the event of a lawsuit because lawsuits at our, our age and, and day with the money Dude, we're making, I know. they're big lawsuits. And that's what I was thinking. I was, like, I was like, yeah, my name's good. But I'm like, nah, it doesn't mean if your name's good. People are still going to come try to f*** you anyway. So yep. I mean, I'm, this would have to be like Wyoming. What was or Delaware. What was or Delaware. Yep. I think I might have erased it, but I like Wyoming. Yeah. That's my favorite state to set up the cope. Because... Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I have to. I'm so glad you went over this because I, you, you just, you see what's going on. Like, we are, as we're growing, it's, yeah, people are, people are crazy, man. And so, like, yeah. I, things are going to be set up, like, the, I've seen everything, bro. The right, the right way. Mm hmm. Yep. And then these house, right? Your employees, right? Mm -hmm. This is like your operational expenses and the income that comes into the company. But I want to know how this also works with JV partnerships. So that's another thing that I'm doing, but I'm doing it through my personal brand LLC. Mm -hmm. So it's separate from Instaboost. Exactly. So now how does that work with the JV partnerships? So this now becomes a multi-member LLC, right? Where maybe you decided that you wanted to get into partnership with somebody. So mm -hmm. you guys both own the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you would have a multi-member LLC and you would write inside your operating agreement every llc has to have an operational agreement mm -hmm. how each partner right 50 percent. let's just say it's 50 percent each partner how 50 how each partner is going to operate inside of this llc 
oh, this partner is responsible for the tax returns and making sure that they find the accountant. Mm -hmm. This partner is responsible for keeping us um, doing uh, hiring. And mm -hmm. um, in the event that we both decide that we want to leave the company, it's already been written in the operating agreement how to buy each other out, buy and sell agreements, All right? So now there's layers to your operations that you're running. Mm -hmm. In this operational entity, this one's a partnership. But over here, this one's not a partnership. So how do we focus on the operating agreement in here because you don't want to get screwed by your partner, right? right. right? So let's, let's lay out right now how we are going to operate inside of this LLC that we own together. Mm -hmm. Or if I own the LLC and you just want a percentage, that's something else. Maybe I can send you a consulting fee, right? Gotcha. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Because let's just say, I'm running this um, this uh, clothing brand, and you want to come in and and um, and help market it, the services of my clothing brand because mm. you're really good at marketing. Mm -hmm. Well, rather than bringing you on as a partner, maybe I I bring you on as um, someone who's providing services. You get commissioned out. So now I'm paying you a fee every single month for what you're doing for my company. Mm -hmm. Just no different than a contractor. Yeah, yeah no different. So that's just so important. It's like the fact that I didn't some some numbers and I haven't done this but it was obviously like not set up like correctly like I just had an LLC like I had multiple of them mm -hmm. there was no management company man, like controlling these LLCs yeah so that means just all the LLCs are just operating on its own they're not feeding into anything they're just standalone operational mm -hmm. companies yeah but each LLC could take its own write-offs each LLC could have its own vehicles could have its own home office so so now that I'm gonna create this like today mm-hmm how do I t like connect these? Like yeah. that's the part that I got. So th this part right here, honestly, I would recommend outsourcing yeah. so you, you just don't have to deal with it. But essentially you're gonna have to resubmit um, statements of information for each one of these entities, okay. letting the government know, oh bro, bro, by the way, I know my name's underneath all these. Actually, I need to put my management company. My management company mm. is an owner of these entities. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Gotcha. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely pay someone for that. But that would yeah, this we'll we'll do yeah. this whole thing for you, bro. Okay. Yeah, we got that's, you. That's that's so far. I'm excited about that because this is like this. This alone is just then that piece I have to like get over this little small hurdle, and then. Let me give you the last this, piece yeah, right here. Yeah, things are gonna. All right. So, your businesses are making. Uh, probably go easier on this side. The last thing I'll tell you is how do we offset all the tax though? Because this is this is great to create management companies mm -hmm. and stuff, but like how do we avoid taxes? So. We have a play as business owners that we can leverage. So your, <clears throat> your LLC, your S Corp, your single member LLC, mm -hmm. if you have a single member LLC, like all these entities are making money that comes to you on an individual tax return called a 1040. If we want to avoid taxes that flows to us from our flow through entities, all these entities are flow through. What does that mm. mean? None of these companies actually pay taxes. The owners of the companies pay taxes. That's what a flow through entity is. Mm. If you have an LLC, your LLC doesn't pay taxes. If you have an S Corp, your S Corp doesn't pay taxes. If you have a single member LLC, it's not gonna pay taxes. The owner oh, that, of the company yeah. pays the damn taxes. So when you file these tax returns, all it's doing is just saying, okay, this is what the business made. And now here's how much of it goes to the mm -hmm. owner and then here's the tax return for the owner, okay? And the form that comes over, it's called a K-1 form, okay? It comes over after you file your taxes. It's like your W-2 for your business, gotcha. yeah. okay? Now, you're gonna have all this income sitting on your individual tax return that you're gonna pay taxes to Uncle Sam for. In order to avoid taxes on your 1040 form, you can either write more stuff off, which means you're spending money, mm -hmm. which every business owner spends money yeah. to reduce their taxes. Let me buy another car. Mm -hmm. Let me buy more Apple computers. Yeah. Let me buy another Samsung TV, mm -mm. right? How many more ring lights can I set up yeah, in my car, right? Office. So I try to get people out of the habit of constantly having to buy to reduce their tax bill because I wanna be a profitable business owner, mm -mm. right? If I wanna be a profitable business owner, I can buy an investment property and leverage depreciation on an investment property mm -hmm. to offset my 1040 income. When you buy an investment property, let's just say you bought this property for 1.5 million. I'm gonna use a big number so it's easier. Let's say you bought this property for 1.5 million. Mm. If you turn this property into an investment, which means someone's living there and paying you, mm. the government will say, okay, Van, I know you bought this house. I'm gonna let you write the whole damn thing off, even though you gave me a down payment. 
of 20% down, 5% down, yeah. FHA, 3.5% yeah. down, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna come in and say, hey, how much of this property that you bought is dedicated to the land and how much is dedicated to the building? Because the land, the government won't let you write that off, but mm -hmm. the building they will. So you say, hey, Carlton, the building's one mil, the land's 500K. That's how I got my 1.5 million when I bought the property. When you buy property, you're buying land and the building. Yeah. So I'll take this 1 million and I'll write this off over the course of 27 and a half years, which is called straight line depreciation. This is the, the default depreciation method that I get when I put your stuff into my tax software. Hmm. So 1 million divided by 27 and a half is 36,363. So that would be your write off every single year for 27 and a half years just, just for having this investment property. But you're gonna say, Carlton, bro, 27 years is a long time. I'm 29, that's a long ass time to, to take that 1 million. Mm. So I will do a strategy for you called a cost segregation study. And I don't wanna lose anyone on this because this is probably the most important thing. The cost segregation study says that I'm going to come with an engineer to your investment property or Airbnb mm -hmm. and get the cost associated with everything inside of your property. The windows, the door, the nuts, the bolts, the screws, the flooring, the drywall, the roof, the shrubbery, the swimming pool, mm -hmm. the HVAC, the electrical, okay. everything. Okay. And I'm gonna get the cost, segregate it from the rest of the structure of the building, the actual like wood and stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna write off all of the cost that made this property in one year, five, seven, 10, or 15 years based on whatever the item is. If the item is washer and dryers, I'm gonna write those things off in five years. If it's flooring, I'm gonna write that off in 10 years. If it's the roof, I'm gonna write that off in 15 years. So I'm reallocating the entire building's one million and writing off certain components in different amount of times. The government created what's called bonus depreciation. Many people know that because you can ride a vehicle that weighs over 6,000 yeah, pounds off in one year. Yeah. If I use bonus depreciation on your rental property, everything that I just reallocated gets written off mm. in one year for you. Normally when I'm leveraging an investment property, mm. I get about 60% of the building's value in one year. That's a $600,000 tax deduction. So if you have $600,000 that came over to your personal tax return, I just created a $600,000 tax deduction on the returns for you, you could be tax free if you made 600K on your tax return by having one investment property. I wanna make sure this makes sense. Yeah, no, it does make, but the management company has to be what? It doesn't even matter if you have or, a management company. Or is it LLC, does any of the LLCs buying into it? And then that's what we're using. Well, it'd be nice for you to have an LLC, but okay. some people don't use LLCs when okay. they buy rentals. Okay. But if you, if you had your operational companies coming to your individual tax returns, you're gonna pay taxes. Mm -hmm. If you wanna avoid taxes without having to spend more money, you could spend your money on an investment property that's gonna pay you, knowing that the government gives you depreciation. I'm choosing how much I want to take in the first year for you. If I choose to take this amount of depreciation, this is a lot mm, of depreciation. Mm. I'm gonna offset whatever money you have sitting on the tax return. So if you show up with 600K on the tax returns and I have a $600,000 loss, you're tax free. Which means yeah. heading into the next year, you just pocketed all the money that these companies made, mm -hmm. plus you have an investment property. Mm -hmm. Now you're in a situation where you can play this game with me. This yeah. is the real estate yeah, game yeah, that yeah. I wanna play with people. Yeah. So I want to get you to buy rentals to offset your working income. Mm -hmm. This is passive, this is active, right? Yep, yep. Okay, so your passive losses from real estate that I've generated, which is called depreciation, needs to offset your active income from Instaboost, my branding, my branding business, my clothing business. Let's say this year after all your write-offs, you made $600,000 in net business income after paying employees, after mm. paying everybody, 600K was left over in my company. I would say, hey Van, I know with this 600K, 200 is going to Uncle Sam in taxes. Do mm. you want to pay that? You'll say, no Carlton, I don't wanna pay 200K. Okay, give me this and let's go buy this. Mm. This pays you, gives me this tax deduction that I can use to offset the 600K in taxable income you have. Now you have a $600,000 loss 
working against the 600K positive income, we're at net zero on the tax returns. To the government, we made no money. Damn. We could do this over and over and over mm -hmm. again. Even though you're making millions, we can just leverage the strategy over and over and over again. It's a rinse and repeat method. I have some clients that Damn. probably won't ever pay taxes ever again. They just won't because we have enough real estate on the tax returns and we just keep doing this over and over again. They're like, dude, I'm about to make eight figures. I'm like, bro, you have enough rentals. We're just not going to pay taxes. And these have to be rental type properties, They right? have to be okay. rentals. They can be Airbnbs or mm -hmm. long-term rentals, but preferably Airbnbs. Okay. Preferably yeah. Airbnbs. Make sense? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So this is like what Robert Kiyosaki was trying to tell people his whole cash flow quadrant. Like how do you go from like the left side of the quadrant to the right side of the quadrant where mm -hmm. you're trading your time for money into becoming a professional investor? This is the part he really didn't teach yeah, me. Yeah. Like the, the strategy. always comes to the real estate. Mm-hmm. This is the strategy. So <clears throat> Damn. when I teach this to somebody and their eyes open up about it, they're mm -hmm. like, yeah, I know I now need a property because I'm going to make a ton more money now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm knowing that I'm not gonna pay Uncle Sam. Damn, mm -hmm. that changes the game. We had a client that made like $9.6 million this year. He wrote a check to the government for like $400. It was like the craziest, <laughs> craziest thing. That's He's like, bro, can I always do this? I was like, yeah. That's but you thing. have to stay in the game mm -hmm. because if you, if you exit the game of real estate, the game's over. Yeah, yeah. Now the taxes show up again. We mm -hmm. don't have the losses working anymore. Right, right. So real estate requires you to stay in the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what Grant Cardone was saying. He's like, if you ever touch the money in real estate, you get burned. You try to sell the property, you're gonna get burned. All the depreciation I took come back to your tax returns yeah. as income to you. Damn. That's how you get burned. Yeah. So yeah. everything I did gets unwound. Everything mm -hmm. gets unwound. It's like I performed a surgery for you and you went and just tore your ACL all over again. Mm -hmm. Everything gets unwound, okay? So this right here, once you understand it, gets really, really fun because now you're focused over here on making money and not worrying as much about how much you have to budget for taxes. Yeah. You're like, bro, I'm not paying taxes this year. Yeah. I'm not ever gonna pay taxes because I'm focused on building a real estate portfolio that helps me offset my ordinary income. Now, what happens with the money that you're making off that rental property? Though? You're not gonna pay taxes either because the losses outweigh the cash flow. Okay. This rental property is probably gonna give you, what, 30 Gs a year? Yeah. That's just like 40 Gs? That's a six hundred thousand dollar loss. You have five hundred and forty now flowing over. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So you're offsetting. You're never going to pay taxes mm. on the, the cash flow. That's different. That's, That's different. different. You're probably thinking if I front loaded all this depreciation and you took six hundred thousand, I'm only left with four hundred k. So what happens after the four hundred k gets wiped up? You have no more depreciation, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So the goal would be for you to either one use the money that you saved from not paying taxes, the zero, and buy another investment property or sell this one via a 1031 exchange. So a, 10, a 1031 exchange is telling the government, I wanna sell that property, but I don't wanna pay any taxes on it. So I'll go buy another investment property and I'll let you know I'm gonna buy an investment property mm. and you are gonna partner with me so that I don't pay any taxes on it. So the government will let you sell your existing rent rental property for um, however much you want to sell it, as long as you identify another property that's equal in value that you wish to buy mm. or greater. And then they allow you to offset 100% of your capital gains by rolling it over into the new property. And you have to just close on the transaction within 180 days, so six months. So you have six months to close on a new property when you're going through the 1031 exchange. And then you won't pay any taxes. So if this $1.5 million property you bought in 2022 is now 1.9 million and you wanna sell it, mm -hmm. if you go through a 1031 exchange, you're not gonna pay any taxes on that 400 gain. Gotcha. You'll just sell it mm -hmm. and buy another property that's equal in value, that's 1.9 million or greater. Yep, and then now you can cost like a $1.9 million property and you keep leveling up. That's a great game, I wanna play that game. That's a great game. Yeah, it's like Monopoly, yeah. bro. it's that's crazy. Yeah, there's levels to this. Gotta get Hopefully back to I wasn't work. talking too fast. No, no, but, no. Um, I, I'm, well, first thing first, I gotta, I'm got gonna set up a management company like today. Um, that way I could get things going. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's fire. Yeah, so we'll set you up a parent um, COPE LLC is what I would recommend. Okay. Yeah, a parent COPE LLC and I would set it up in Wyoming. Yeah. And then from there, you guys would do the rest and just like get all the change and ownership state filing information yeah, so easy okay. bro it should get done in a day that'd be so easy
Jeez. Yeah. And nothing would change for you. All bank accounts stay the same, money stays the same. Mm. It's just at the end of the year now, you're gonna move money from your operational companies like we talked about. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, you're gonna move money from your operational companies into your management company to record the tax deduction that we're looking for. These are all tax deductions, mm -hmm. right? The reason why you wouldn't do it right now is because you don't know what you're, year, what you're gonna finish the year doing. Yeah. And you don't know how big of a write-off you need. Yeah. So why not wait to pull the trigger on making the management expense until the end of the year when we know exactly how much left we need to wipe out? Mm -hmm.